հանուն հոր եւ որդ ո եւ օկվույն սրբո ամեն սիրելի հավատացյալներ այս 10 օրերը որոնց մեջ կգտնվինք գոչվին համբարձման շրջան որով եւ անցնող 5 շաբթի օրը մեր եկեղեցին դոնախմբեց մեր դիրոջ հիսուս քրիստոսի հրաշափարաբես համբարձումը my dear brothers and sisters today is called second palm sunday and this past thursday our church celebrated the feast of the ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ. Today we continue our series on talking about relevant issues related to our faith and daily lives. Last time we talked about the Armenian church and cremation, how our church approaches this issue, and I hope what we said uh, satisfied your questions. Today we will continue this series and this time we will talk about marriage, the Armenian church and marriage, and next time we will talk about the Armenian church and divorce. But why are we talking about marriage? If you remember, last time I said every message is a response to a need. So what is the need here? What is the problem here? Well, as a pastor, as a husband, as a father, and someone who lives in this society, I believe that there are many misconceptions about marriage out there. Even if we look at the studies, even if we look at the numbers, we will figure out that for good or for bad reasons, around 50% of marriages and in divorce, and this is a high number. So let's see what are these misconceptions about marriage. There are some who have good thoughts and ideas about marriage, but these ideas represent more the culture of Hollywood, the culture that surround us, the way that people think but those ideas are against the will of God. Now, please, I don't want to be misunderstood. I'm not trying to play us versus them game, or I'm trying to claim that what we have inside the church, in our faith, is pure, is clean, is good, and everything else that is outside there is just evil, unclean. I'm not trying to claim this. But what I am trying to say is that there are many ideas, many thoughts that we have about marriage. They just do not represent the Christian understanding of marriage. They represent something else. Now, for some people, marriage is a contract. It is the same contract that they make when they work. What do you do when you are going to sign a contract? Well, you carefully read the instructions, the terms, the conditions, and then you sign the contract, and usually the contract is binding for just a limited time. So you can renew your contract anytime that you want, or you can just tear that contract sheet, and it's done. No contract anymore. Some people treat marriage the same way. They think that marriage vows are to be treated like we treat the contract. You can always renew the contract. Um, you can always renew your vows of marriage. This is how they think. Or if life starts to become a routine, if little problems arise from here or there, if things do not go well, what we do? Well, we end that marriage as we end that contract. And there are some people who unfortunately think this way about marriage. For others, marriage should be a continuous 
Romeo and Juliet relationship. How? Well, the intense love and the romantic feelings that characterize such kind of relationship should always be present for some people, no matter what happens. And if not, then they think that there is something wrong with marriage, so they have to end it. These people do not accept or try to understand the simple uh, idea that life has its ups and downs, that marriage is more than mere romantic feelings and relationship, and it is also about self-sacrifice. It is also about duties, responsibilities. My dear friends, what is marriage? First and foremost, before even going to the points, marriage was started by God himself. God thought to find a companion to man, as we read in the book of Genesis. So God formed the woman to unite her to the man. So God united the man and the woman. And this is very foundational for our faith. So after putting this foundation, we are going to learn about three things, three important things about marriage. And these three points are what our church thinks about marriage. First and foremost, according to Christianity and according to the Armenian church, marriage isn't a contract. It is a covenant blessed by God and God's church in the presence and witness of the gathered community of faith. Now, these two words start with the same letter, covenant and contract. But what is the difference between them? Let me tell you, when two parties sign a contract, it means that both agree on some terms. And if one party fails to perform its duties, then the other party will naturally have the right to withdraw from the agreement or change it or do whatever he she wants. But when two parties make a covenant with each other, then that covenant becomes a lifelong, no matter what happens, not limited to specific terms. For example, you, the covenant that you have with your friend, even when your friend hurts you, even if your friend comes to you with different mood, even if your friend doesn't make it a priority for himself or herself to understand you, but because there is a covenant between you, you still become loyal to your friendship. And this is what is the difference between the covenant and the contract. Also, contracts are based on rigid laws. But on the other hand, covenant is based on love. And love is the foundation of marriage. Without love, there is no Christian marriage. That is not going to be possible. We cannot have marriage only based on laws. This is the time that you have to wake up. This is the time that you have to go to work. This is the time to do this. This is the time to do that. Any relationship cannot be based only on laws. It needs love. And in the case of marriage, it is love that works. Second, marriage is lifelong. Marriage isn't limited to one period of time. And for this reason, in marriage, the husband and the wife, they do not give just 50% of themselves to each other and expect to be given 50%. No, they give 100% to each other and expect to be given 100%. Because marriage is lifelong, Marriage is about emptying oneself for the sake of the other. There is another word here to use. Marriage is about sacrifice. We've heard this word a lot, sacrifice. I mean, we hear it in the news. We hear it in the speeches. We hear it in the sermons, like this sermon. 
We read it in the books, in the articles. Okay? We, we hear it in the, mu in the movies. But sometimes what we imagine about sacrifice is that sacrifice should be something very big. You know, like someone gives his her life to someone else. Otherwise, it is not a sacrifice. And this kind of sacrifice happens only once or twice in life. This is how we think about sacrifice. But sacrifice, especially in marriage, is about this daily little things that we do and have meaning like for example if i like like to watch a scary movie and my wife likes to watch drama or romantic movie it is a sacrifice if i say let's watch a drama this night instead of a scary movie or if this year i like to go and visit some of my relatives in canada okay but my husband has some cousins in California and he hasn't seen them for a long time, it is a sacrifice if I say, let's go to California this year instead of Canada. So these little things that are the salt and the pepper of marriage and on which marriage is built, these little sacrifices. My dear brothers and sisters, because marriage is lifelong, we do not only give our present time to our husband or wife, but we share our past and go to the future together. And for this reason, we ask God, we pray to God, so that we stay together no matter what happens. Because we Christians believe that the person that we marry is a gift from God. We cannot change that person what we can do is accept that gift from God and try to be loyal to that gift and journey together to the future. And third, according to the Armenian Church, marriage has its purpose. Having children and raising these children so that they can become the citizens of heaven and the citizens of the country where they live. If you notice, there is this culture around us that says something like this. Me, me, my happiness, my achievements. Let, let us marry for our enjoyment, for some legal benefits, to spend some time, and then when the time comes, we will have kids. Now, some people, of course, postpone having kids, sometimes for good reasons, and that these reasons are understandable. But these are exceptions. One of the church fathers says that God gave his creatures the ability to co-create. Isn't this amazing? We can have our offspring and they will become the new creatures of this earth. What a privilege, my dears, uh, to become the source of a a new human being. And some people just ignore this gift, ignore this privilege. During the wedding service of the Armenian church, there is a part which is called the crowning part. You know, we, be, we uh, put two crowns on, or each crown on the head of the bride and the groom. So we crown them. Do you know why we do it? Well, because we proclaim them as a king and a queen over their household. But we know that any kingdom is a kingdom when that kingdom has people. A kingdom isn't a kingdom just because there are the king and the queen. Where are the people? And in this case, in marriage, the people of that kingdom are the children. In the book of Genesis, we read, God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. So having children, my beloved, shouldn't be optional according to our church. I know that sometimes that is not possible because of some physiological reasons. But the truth is, 
the couple gets married and enters a relationship with the purpose of having children, whether that becomes a possibility or not in the future, that is not important. What is important is that we enter into that relationship with the hope that we are going to have children. Children are blessings. Children represent life, freshness, our ability to form a holy house where we share love, where we share forgiveness with our family, acceptance, and we serve each other. Children are also our hope because it is only with them that we go to the unknown, to the future. So my dear brothers and sisters, today we learned about the three most important purposes of marriage according to our church. Let's remember them. First of all, marriage is a covenant. It is not a contract. Second, marriage is a lifelong sacrifice, giving oneself to the other. And third, marriage is about having children and raising them. May God bless all of our marriages, all of our families, and make us rooted in these principles for his sake and for his glory. God bless you all. Amen.